don't forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was tearing queens up. Fall off the prop and not the re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm Baby Man. Just caught a touchdown. From the Bay. Yo, yo. We back. It's your boy Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Florida with it. St. Pete. Now all my niggas from St. Pete, all my niggas from Florida. Y'all niggas get in the comment box. Y'all know it's not our first time around here. We about to get right to it. Now, the guy that we're going to be covering today is going to be a top level drug kingpin or crack kingpin that goes by the name of Elric Bernard Wynn. Now, a little bit about Mr. Wynn. He was based out of the St. Pete area. He also has ties to the Okla area, to the Tampa area. Um, pretty much just a big deal in Florida um, in the late 1990s going into 2000. Now, in 1998 is going to be the last time that law enforcement had any contact with Mr. Wynn. Now, with that being said, according to federal authorities, they said that from 1994 to 1996, Mr. Elric Wynn was the leader of a crack distribution organization that was based in St. Petersburg and it was responsible for dispersing an estimated 1,200 kilograms of cocaine. Now, they said that his organization was complete with mid-level dealers and distributors, and they reportedly racked in about $8 million a year. And the organization might be involved with two drug-related homicides along that time. Now, Mr. Wynn was featured on America's Most Wanted on January 22nd, 2011. And, and prior to that even, like I said, 1998 was the last time law enforcement had any contact with him. They said he pretty much been a ghost. Goes by the name of Nard, E.W., and Big E. Now, a little bit about Mr. Wynn. Authorities said that he got his start in the crack game from the previous crack kingpin and it's hard to tell the story of mr Wynn without telling the story of the previous kingpins or the previous crack kingpins in st petersburg history now we're going to start with robert earl wonderman lee and according to authorities they say that he was one of the first crack kingpins in st petersburg and authorities shut down his rank back in 1989 they said that his family made millions and Lee lost $30,000 one time because he forgot this, that he stashed that $30,000 in the trash. Now, in 1990, him and his brother, Roy Larry Lee, were sentenced to life in prison. I did see where they were up um, to be commuted by Barack Obama, and I want to say that they were commuted by Barack Obama when he went back in kind of overturned the convictions of a lot of people that were caught up in the drug wars in the late 1980s, early 90s. Now, it wasn't before long after Robert Earl Wonder Man Lee's operation was shut down that Romeo or Ronald Eugene Romeo Mathis came along and he uh, was named the second crack kingpin in St. Petersburg. And according to authorities, Mr. Wing pretty much worked hand in hand with both these operations. But um, Romeo Mathis, he was once a cog in Lee's operation. So they pretty much worked together as well. Authorities said that Mathis uh, went on to build a sophisticated machine that sold drugs. And he operated three shifts that were 24 hours a day. And it was bringing him up to 300000 a week. Um, and left a lot of the residents in St. Pete fearful. Now, according to media outlets and news testimony, it was said that Mathis 
was handcuffed, smiling, yelling, I'll be back. In 1991, as authorities took him off to prison, he was he was ended up being sentenced to life in prison in 1994 for his misdeeds. Now, according to Mike Salona, Wynn worked with both the Wonder Man Lee and Romeo Mathis organizations. He would go on to say that Wynn was a very important player and that Mathis and Jeffrey Lee were Wynn's mentors and he learned a lot from them and he built up a vast organization and he controlled the majority of the crack and the powder cocaine that was flowing in and out of St. Petersburg. Now, what might have saved him is that it said that he wasn't as flashy as Mathis or Wonder Man Lee, but authorities said that he was more productive than the both of them. They estimated that his organization moved a total of one ton or between 50 to 100 pounds a month of crack cocaine in and out of St. Petersburg, and that's going to be from 1993 going into 1998 when authorities last had contact with him. And they going to estimate that he was making right around $700,000 a month. And like I stated earlier, over $8 million a year. Now, at the time of the indictments, the authorities believe that Wynn was tipped off by the raids. And they say it was going to be by associates who was arrested. Um, as he was being arrested, he was getting off the phone with Wynn and he warned him. Now... Detective Salona said that there were rumors at the time that Wynn was killed by a former lieutenant or he possibly might have faked his death. Um, his motorcycle was later found abandoned on the side of the road somewhere in St. Pete, but authorities kind of still believe that he could be in a drug trade somewhere in Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, or Richmond. So they're actively seeking him based on reports by the media coverage it was like money wasn't a really an issue for Wynn and he had several other advantages on the police because he had access to fake identification and fake documents. One of the men that was arrested in 1998 um, in that indictment with him was a driver's license clerk who they said provided Wynn and his employees of his organization with legitimate Florida driver's license that was issued under fake names and as far as the money aspect so like we said earlier they say he was making up to seven hundred thousand dollars a month eight million dollars a year so maybe he was one of the smarter kingpins that had some of that stashed away um but he definitely was one of the smarter kingpins because we love to cover this story because he has yet to be apprehended by authorities now, and they said that he was known to show up at backyard card games with sixty to eighty thousand dollars to gamble. Um, he was known to hit the casinos in Vegas and then Biloxi. Now, like I said, his organization was indicted in the year of two thousand. But the last contact that the authorities had with him was in the year of 1998. He almost, he, not almost, he went two decades without any police contact. And some people are going to attribute that to him being a master of disguise. They said that he's known to change his appearance so he's not detected by authorities, including sometimes having a goatee or having a full beard even going as far as to wearing wigs and women's clothing. Media outlets like the Tampa Bay Times would go on to say Eldrick Bernard Big E Win made millions pushing crack cocaine in the 1990s. Authorities say building the biggest drug syndicate in the city's history by the age of 27. The last publication I seen on him was in 2011 and it was by that same Tampa Bay Times. And they said that he would have been 41 years old by that time. And today being 2020, going into 2021, he should be right around 50 or 51 at that time. So just based on that information alone, it's like half his life, he 
he was involved with the drug organization heading it up until the time that he was 27 and then with it now him possibly being a fugitive on the run being 51 he spent his other half of his life on the run some reports said that he went to the Virgin Islands like I said some reports said that he was killed by a lieutenant some reports say that he died on a motorcycle crash who knows I'm gonna think that he's in St. Thomas sipping pina coladas it's rare that we get to cover the stories like this Frank Matthews is another one name I want y'all to get in the comment box and y'all name me somebody that got away to catch me if you can usually we cover people that are dead that are in jail it's usually a good story when we cover somebody that served 25 years and come home but y'all name me the person that did not get caught and we already know Frank Mathis so who else y'all got y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram on Twitter it's your boy pop a lot p-o-p underscore a underscore l-o-t we gonna be back with some more real trill spill shit and y'all know what it is man it's the mob 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 ties